Welcome back everybody to another reaction video. This is one that's been requested quite a bit. Every so often, if you're familiar with the channel, you'll know I like to dive into a little bit of alternate history. Rather than talking about what did happen, uh, talking about what might have happened had something changed in history. So today we're looking at alternate history hubs. What if Germany won World War II? In the past, we've looked at their What if Germany won World War I. I'll put a link in the description. So if you want to check out that reaction video, you can see it. I believe this is a two-parter. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and dive into part one today. As always, I want to say a big thank you to all of our new patrons that have signed up to support this channel. Your support means more than I can possibly say, uh, and you help make this channel possible. So thank you for that. If you do not yet see your name listed as one of the sponsors of the channel, I will be updating that very soon. I do it about once a week. So let's dive right into this. I've never seen the video, so I have no idea what he's going to talk about, but I'll be curious to see where he goes with it. ...to transform the destiny of mankind. Not only was it the most destructive conflict in human history, but it was the ultimate clash of ideologies and factions which had slowly evolved for centuries. In our timeline, after years of war, the Third Reich was obliterated, Hitler committed suicide, and a violent ideology died with him. In the aftermath, the victors, the Allies, organized the entire world in a manner which would never allow such an occurrence to happen again. They were able to shape mankind's future in their image. Today we are globalized, connected both economically and socially. The internet, American influence, all can be tied back to the victors of that war. The reason I say this is because many don't think about the world today in any other way than the natural evolution of progress. Yet it is not. If the war's outcome had been any different, Western civilization from every aspect of life would have been radically changed. And, you know, it's fair to say that, you know, he kind of focuses in on American influence, but, not, you know, the entire world is not under American influence. For a large part of the post-war world, for example, you had Eastern Europe heavily under the Soviet influence. Uh, places like Poland and Czechoslovakia and Romania and Hungary, these were countries that really didn't get a choice in the post-war world. Uh, and that was something they knew was coming. Um, Churchill, Roosevelt, and then later Truman, uh, they saw this and they understood that as much as we were trying to win a war in Europe against Germany, it was also a war about how much can we limit the dominance of the Soviet Union in the post-war world. So they're already thinking in those terms. What if the Allies did not defeat Nazi Germany? What if in an alternate timeline, the Third Reich through military might and conquest conquered Europe in one World War II? I'm going to explore the effects of a Nazi victory on the human and global scale. How would it transform the 20th and 21st centuries? In American schools, Nazi imagery and teachings are only mentioned in brief generalizations. We all know Nazi policies were anti-Semitic, racist, authoritarian, etc., but rarely is the ideology itself analyzed. In this alternate scenario, I'm not going to specifically focus on what Germans could have done differently to have won the war. This has been debated by numerous historians. What I want to focus on is what such a world would look like if Hitler's plans were allowed to be put into action. And we, we have a glimpse of that uh, in one sense already. If you've ever seen the TV show The Man in the High Castle, that is a world in which the Axis powers won the war. Uh, and you see what America looks like divided uh, into the Pacific being controlled by the Japanese and the eastern half of the United States being controlled by the uh, by the Germans. And you see one such interpretation of what that world might look like. Here is one scenario. In this alternate timeline, Nazi Germany has launched a successful invasion of Europe. Britain, France, Poland, the Eastern Soviet Union. Oh, that's right. This is the guy who calls it Britain instead of Britain. <laughs> Cotton instead of cotton. Okay, I'll do my best to overlook that. ...and numerous other countries all have been occupied by German troops. Somehow Germany invaded Britain, and facing overwhelming odds, even though Churchill promised not to, the British are forced to surrender or be basically annihilated. In this alternate timeline, the Third Reich consolidates control over the new land it is occupied across the continent making any effective American incursion impossible. At first, resistance movements would fight against the Germans in puppet fascists like in Vichy France and the UK, but after years of strengthening control over trade and resources, the Third Reich basically starves out any opposition. The Germans in our timeline, and in this alternate one, would massacre innocent civilians in retaliation for insurgency. With this tactic and low resources, resistance would fall, 
pretty quickly. In the Soviet Union, the war between the Russians and Germans drags into a stalemate, eventually devolving into a resistance movement as the Russians are pushed back to the Urals. How this could have occurred, I'm not going to specify, but if the Nazis' plan succeeded, then the Soviet government is pushed further into Siberia, but the bulk of the population is now under German control. Nazism cannot be registered on how we traditionally think on the political scale. It is an entirely new beast, one that takes elements from across the spectrum to reinvent society into something entirely new. And that's an excellent point to make too, because all too often people try to define Nazi Germany on the left-right scale, and, and people try to argue, well, it's you know they're hardcore right, uh, but then people say, but wait, they're socialists, and so they're also on the left, and. And, you know, it, he's right. You really can't define it on the typical political spectrum because it is an entirely new beast. It's this uh, kind of, it is a socialist government in a lot of ways in terms of um, the government controlling the means of production and those sorts of things. But it's also very right wing in terms of nationalism and those sorts of things. So it really is kind of a unique beast. Hitler's new order was to be a civilization that threw away centuries of Western teachings, including the ideas of the French Revolution, the Enlightenment, and Christianity. A civilization that bases everything on the spread and domination of a specific group, the Aryan race. To understand a world where the Germans won World War II, we need to understand the concepts of Nazism and their horrific ideas of racial superiority and classification. If Nazi Germany won the war, they would reorganize Europe based on racial hierarchies. Since eugenics was popular, the Nazis based their policies off of genetics and ranked people off of positive and supposed inferior genes. Yeah, and you know, if you visit a place like the uh, the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C., uh, at least when I was there last, they had a whole um, kind of display on all of that, talking about how they used eugenics and how they determined who was a Jew who was a German who was an Aryan using your ancestry and uh, you know they went to a lot of of lengths like they, they put a lot of effort and work into this stuff in determining those sorts of things and um, you know I can see how they would set up this whole hierarchy system and almost like a caste system where if you were of certain pure genes then you could have a lot more access to opportunities in society certainly people like Russians are gonna be way down the, the scale at the top was the Aryan race Aryans to the Nazis were people of Germanic descent. This meant pure ethnic Germans had the highest status among the Nazi society. Just below true Aryans were Western Europeans, such as the British, Northern French, Irish, and Dutch. The Chinese and Japanese were also at this level, as Hitler declared them honorary Aryans. Below them, honorary Aryans, because you fought on our side in the war. But he's right. Um, you know, the, the Western Europeans, Hitler did have a much higher opinion, racially speaking, of people like the British than he did of Eastern Europeans and especially the Russians. Were the Mediterranean race. Southern and Tanner Europeans, such as Italians, Southern French, Spanish, and Greeks, Hitler believed Southern Europeans were naturally more lazy than the Northerners. This thought of Italian inferiority to Germans caused a lot of tension between Mussolini and Hitler. I'll talk about how this will play out later. Skipping past a few levels at the very bottom were the Untermensch. These were racial groups the Nazis considered too inferior or dangerous to live. These were the Slavs, such as the Poles, Russians, and Ukrainians, Jews, Roma, homosexuals, communists, etc. And so the Roma... Um People, I guess the the easiest way to describe that would be like gypsies. Um, you know, if you've ever seen the TV show um, Peaky Blinders, that's who they are. They are Roma or Romani. In this alternate timeline, if Germany was able to successfully implement Lebensraum, after decades of German control, Poland, Russia, and the Eastern Slavs would cease to exist. The Slavic people of Eastern Europe would face a genocide mm. ten times larger than that of the Holocaust in our timeline. Mass extermination in the tens of millions. Yep. Hitler was a fan of how the United States successfully depopulated and pushed back the American Indians. And so he wanted to recreate this against the Slavs. Uncomfortable to talk about as an American, but absolutely true. Uh, they did look at what happened with the Native Americans. Now, 
we, you know, the United States wasn't rounding up every Native American and exterminating them in a camp, so I wouldn't put it on that level. Uh, but we basically kept pushing them, pushing them, pushing them, and if they refused to go, send in the army and start shooting. Uh, that did happen. Uh, and we have to acknowledge that that happened, but uh, there's no comparison to what Hitler was doing with rounding people up en masse and, and putting them into death camps. Uh, but yeah, this is absolutely a good point. He would have done this with the Russians, the Poles, and others in a heartbeat and not thought twice about it. In this alternate timeline, following a German victory, borders are redrawn arbitrarily and governments are set up in what was formerly Poland, Ukraine, and the Russian states, now with German leaders. Slavs begin to lose rights, resistance is met with entire towns being slaughtered, and Jews are immediately sent into concentration camps, as they were to be automatically killed. The Slavic people were to become enslaved, and used as a mass labor force to contribute to the German war machine, and farm the land if need be. But first, most of the population would need to die. Laws are passed similar to Stalin's policies, causing mass starvation, and soon millions die in a massive famine. In our timeline, Hitler's plan was for over 50 million to die before colonization could begin. Think about that. As horrible as the Holocaust was, and you gotta remember, it wasn't just six million Jews who died in the Holocaust, it was millions of those other groups, Romani, the Russians, um, folks of that nature. Uh, that was a drop in the bucket of what Hitler wanted to do. It could have been so much worse if he would have had his opportunity to do so. Over a period of a few years, once the natives no longer exist as a nation, German colonists begin moving and colonizing former Slavic lands. Germany as a country is quadrupled in size, expanding from France to the center of Russia. The few Slavs deemed acceptable for Germanization are forced to only have children with Germans to eventually breed out the Slavic genes. The culture of these lands would be destroyed and torched, history of the people forgotten under Nazi genocide. With the massive industrial scale of the Third Reich and resistance defeated, they could easily be capable of such an atrocity. Yeah. The German school systems would teach young Germans the inferiority of the Slavs, creating a new racial divide between German Aryans and enslaved Slavic people. And this is another thing that we have to really take into consideration. He's absolutely right, uh, is that once they've established themselves and they're no longer at war, now they start the indoctrination process on a grand scale. Every kid being born and raised is going to be raised to believe these racial uh, complexities, these, these hierarchies of... Aryans and, and other folks being be below them and and you're you're gonna have whole generations of young people being raised believing this to be true and you can completely change the world very quickly by doing that very similar to situations in apartheid South Africa, racial segregation and outright atrocities would occur between German colonial masters and enslaved Russians in the Ukraine colonies. Slavs would be banned from reproducing except to create new slaves. In fact, across Nazi Germany, abortion would not only be legal but mandatory for non-Aryans. It would remain illegal for Aryan mothers as German women would be expected to reproduce as much as possible. Yeah, and you know, um one of the things they talked about at the Vonnesey conference, which was the conference where they eventually made the decision to exterminate the Jews, was uh, they had been working toward that for a while with policies about things like forced sterilization. Uh, so yeah, this was all stuff that they considered was uh, one way to get rid of a populace was to not allow them to reproduce um, before outright going to just executing. Mass sterilization would be enforced against parents who gave birth to unhealthy children or kids born with Down syndrome or develop mental illnesses. German colonists would farm the fertile lands of the Ukraine and use the vast breadbasket to feed a growing German population. If successful, Nazi Germany would redefine the demographics of Europe, and in a few decades, most of the population in Eastern Europe would be of German descent. The new order meant a complete reinvention of what it meant to be European and a member of Western civilization. Nazi Germany would be the leading dominant nation of Europe and be the puppet master to the countless fascist governments of the UK, France, Italy, and Spain. I'm curious, and I'm sure he's going to talk about it. I wonder what he thinks the United States is doing in this time uh, and what Japan's doing, because we didn't really talk about like, does this mean that Japan and the United States, how does that war end up in this? You know, because it's one thing for Germany to win. That doesn't necessarily mean that Japan wins uh, in the Pacific. 
Uh, and at what point does the United States decide to get involved in what's happening in Europe to put a stop to it? And, and could they do that on their own without other help? Even though propaganda would boast an equal union of European nations, in reality, some nations, even fascist ones, would be lower than others. Hitler's racial criteria would determine Nazi relationships, and so German policies would favor more Aryan nations like France and Britain over Mediterranean countries like Spain and Italy. In this alternate timeline, with the war over, the Nazis would immediately rebuild Britain, and fascist Britain would become the right-hand man to the Reich. As for the Italians, even in our timeline, Mussolini knew the disdain Hitler had for Southern Europeans, and it greatly affected the relationship between the two. Mussolini's call for a unity between mm. the Nordic and Mediterranean races fell on deaf ears for the Nazis. In this alternate timeline, I predict Hitler simply would have tolerated Southern Europe for the sake of stability, while playing favorites with the Nordic, French, and That's British. Fair. This split would grow even larger in the following decades, becoming a culture clash between the two regions. In our timeline, the Holocaust was only supposed to be the first phase of the New Order immediate genocide of undesirables within German borders. However, these were not the only groups the Nazis wished to silence. Nazism at its core was shaped by the idea of a race united yeah. under the full allegiance to the state and only the state. Citizens were to contribute militarily and technologically to advance the German race. To Hitler and the Third Reich, any idea that took focus away from the state was an enemy any. Removing the Jewish question was the first phase of the new order. The Slavs were next, and after that, Catholicism itself, or the church question. Hitler was born a Catholic, but grew to hate the church as he became an adult. His views fell perfectly in line with the Nazi ideology. And that that's an interesting thing to think about as well, is that at some point if he goes after the Catholic church, do other churches follow? I mean, you know, the Lutheran church is heavily Germanic. Um, you know, do they go after the Lutherans? Do they start going after Protestants? Uh, it's not something I really thought about, but if at some point Christianity became a threat to Nazism, then yeah. Nazism viewed Catholicism as not only an obstacle, but a threat to the progress of the German state. They despised the idea of a non-governmental force having influence over Europeans and Aryans. Before the war, Nazis closed Catholic institutions, barred Catholic messages, and arrested many members of the clergy. However, in part with his alliance with Italy and a stop instability, Hitler made a treaty with the Vatican to respect Catholic institutions. Yet to the Nazis, Catholics remained a prominent threat. In this alternate timeline after the war, the Nazis would immediately break the agreement with the Vatican. Across Germany and its occupied territories, Catholic institutions would be closed and its clergymen arrested. Yeah, that's fair because once you, you know, you make that agreement for the sake of your alliance with Italy, once that alliance with Italy is no longer politically expedient, it, it no longer really helps you, it no longer is necessary, then you don't feel any obligation to honor your treaty. In Hitler's eyes, religion itself was fundamentally incompatible and dangerous to the progress of Europe. He even called those who were religious slaves. At the time, the Nazis had to put up a face of being Protestant Christians, but secretly, the highest ranks, like Joseph Goebbels, despised religion and Catholicism. Yet they decided to postpone any action until after the war. They and it's kind of funny that they despise religion, because really, in a lot of ways, Nazism is like a religion. It's a cult. Um, and I'm sure they knew that, which is why they despised other religions, because again, those are competitors, those are threats. They believed it was a foreign invention which promoted Jewry and made Europeans weak-minded and too merciful. Heydrich Himmler even wrote, We live in an era of the ultimate conflict with Christianity. It is a part of the mission of the SS to give the German people in the next half century the non-Christian ideological foundations on which to lead and shape their lives. This task does not consist solely in overcoming an ideological opponent, but must be accompanied at every step by a positive impetus. In this case, that means the reconstruction of the German heritage in the widest and most comprehensive sense. In this alternate timeline, the Third Reich would have used everything to slowly strangle Christianity in yep. its borders. Propaganda to paint Catholics at first as enemies of Aryans and Germans, and even secret violence against Catholic leaders. The same tactics which divided Europeans just as they did between Slavs and Germans. Over the decades, Catholicism would be stripped from Nazi Germany. 
most of the Catholic Poles would have been killed in the hunger policies. In German Catholic regions, simple Nazi propaganda would be used to snuff out the church. Laws banning Catholic education and press would be enacted. After so basically, it's the, the slow eradication of any threat to your hold on uh, government, on power, on the people. Uh, and and new, thre new threats would emerge, you know, things that we can't even think of because in this alternate timeline, there are things that would have become, uh, would have come into existence that we don't even know about. Um, you know, just like had World War I never happened, we might not have ever considered the idea of a Nazi Germany in the first place because that arose out of the events of World War I. After the Catholic Church, the Third Reich would actively discourage Christianity itself. And if decades of propaganda would work, they could create a generation of loyal, non-Christian Germans. And before you think that that's something that would really go down, look at you know places like the Soviet Union, where uh, yeah, nominally Russian Orthodox Church, for example, could continue to exist, or in China, yeah, yeah, technically Christianity can exist, but uh, it's by and large eradicated uh, or frowned upon and discouraged because it's antithesis of. Uh, the beliefs of communism. And North Korea is another example of that. Nazis would teach that the religion was a destructive, brainwashing Jewish force which weakened native Europeans. Some Nazis even wished to replace Christianity with neo-paganism. But in this timeline, religion would be replaced with loyalty to the Nazi regime and to the race. The swastika would replace the cross across much of German Europe. This scenario is going to be a part of a new series. I don't know how many parts it will be, but I want to focus in detail on every aspect of life in this alternate scenario. I don't want to rush it. World War II was a defining moment that decided the history of Western civilization. In the Allied victory, Nazism was destroyed and never returned to power. But had the victory gone to Germany, the modern world would have evolved and taken a much darker turn. Over the next few videos, I'll explore in length one out of the infinite possible scenarios if Hitler had won the war. Like on Facebook and subscribe if you have not done so. This is so interesting. Uh, so maybe there's more than uh, more than two parts to this. So I'll be curious to see where he goes with that. I think it's all very well thought out. Uh, I can't really disagree with any of what he said so far. Uh, I think that's all very plausible and even likely, given what we know about the direction Nazi Germany was going. That's one of the things is that unlike a lot of alternate history, you can pretty well predict where they were headed because they they were. They advertised what they were going to do. They talked about it. They had the plans. You know, Hitler had plans for uh, what Berlin was going to look like when he was able to rebuild it. He had Albert Speer doing all this stuff to kind of design their grand capital that they were going to have. They had plans for what they were going to do with their Lebensraum when they took over Ukraine and, and Western Russia and things like that. So uh, we know very well what they were thinking of doing. So um, he's obviously done his homework and looking at all that. Let me know what you think about that. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What maybe would you change if you were coming up with your own description of what this would look like? And we'll continue this series uh, in the coming days. And then we're going to dive into Admiral Yi on extra history. So let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. I put a link in the description to the original content creator so you can check that out. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.